Hello there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior, the Earth's mightiest video podcast. And today, we got something a little bit special. Coming directly from Loose Collector, we have Morocco of the Great Wolves. And oh my goodness, I'm a little bit excited here. In fact, I'm so excited, I'm going to try and actually calibrate myself tone the Dave down a little bit because this was sent directly from Loose Collector so I want to make that very very clear because it's very easy for me to get, get caught up in the hype and the hoopla especially when I get sent something that looks like this. It's very easy to get overexcited but I want to put on my critical hat as well because even though this was sent directly from Loose Collector I gotta be a respectable broadcast journal <laughs> who am i kidding <laughs> this thing's amazing yeah it's a it's it's a giant werewolf it does what it says on the tin it's it's the ron seal of action figures do you want a gigantic crazy awesome looking werewolf boom is this what you're looking for well i should hope so because i don't know what else you could do to zhuzh up something like this it's it's pretty incredible you want to hear about it here it goes. This is the grey variant, obviously. There are four different ones. There's the grey, the white, the black, and the brown. And they all have their different names and I would imagine a funky little backstory behind them as well. I don't know the lore, I just know the looks. And the looks initially are just fantastic. I mean, look at the size of this guy for a start. First and foremost, you, you want to know like where the cost of this figure goes? It's in the plastic. You can, you can feel the weight with this werewolf right here. The fact that he even towers over characters like Veteran William, like that's that's quite something. I'm gonna do some fun size comparisons at the end of this video. But the, the, the size is, that's the biggest selling point. This thing is intimidating. For me personally, I, I always just get a big bang of Saber Wolf from Killer Instinct. That's my 90s childhood right there. I wanna match this guy up against Ryu and some of the Capcom characters. That's gonna be a lot of fun. The, the, the body, the sculpting, I'm going to try and put on my proper review analytical hat here. The the sculpting is just, well, I mean, you, it, it, you can see for yourself, can't you? I mean, I don't want to make myself redundant here or anything, but the actual work that's gone into this is so, so pretty. When you take a closer look at everything that's going on here, all the individual fur that's been sculpted, I love the veins on the arms and the chest as well. Real real close itty bitty type detail. This this wolf works out, clearly. I kind of kind of wish that I could just get bitten by a werewolf and it would save me all that time at the gym because this guy's jacked. All right, actually, I, 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 wanna, I wanna test. I wanna know what this guy's on because he ain't natty brah. <laughs> you don't get this kind of size with that sort of definition as well. It's just not possible. So <laughs> that's, the, that's the first thing that's unbelievable about this character, quite frankly. He wins the Scott Putsky Award. So, yeah, the, the sculpt is terrific. One thing I will say, though, I'm sorry I kind of jump around with my reviews. It's just wherever my brain goes. I should be more analytical. Like Articulated Ninja, he's got dead ass, which is just the breakdown of the different aspects. Me, it's Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. So what I want to say, big thing going out first, if you're going to pick this up, whew, he needs a bath. He ain't he ain't stinky. He ain't he ain't a smelly dog. But but he is stiffer than a right hook from Big Van Vader. So you gotta heat him up. Cause I was I I couldn't bend like I couldn't articulate the torso, the legs, but that's also a good thing as well. Hear me out on that one. Okay. Because with a with a character this big, with this much upper body weight, the last thing you want. Is loose joints. The, 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 the name of the, the name of the manufacturer is loose collector. Alright? Not loose joints. Okay? And he makes sure of that because yeah, at, at first I was like, oh geez, can I what what can I move? What am I supposed to move? Luckily, a quick hot water bath later, and you could actually articulate and spin the torso around and the hips as well. It's all these great dumbbell joints. So you've got a great range of motion going on here. It's it's great. He's going to hold his position. That's the important thing. Especially, this is a big one, with these kinds of, I don't know, what do you call these inverted legs that canines and animals have? These legs. 
very difficult to get characters that stand up with these. I've had a lot of experience with the Fure Planet guys and, you know, a few little gripes there occasionally. Because just to, to get the proportions and the look of the figure and the character right, you've got to have these small ankles and very lithe, spindly legs, but then they're holding up this big, hefty guy here. So you've got to have really strong joints. And that seems to be the case. I've been playing around with this guy for about 24 hours now, putting him in different poses. And one, my favorite pose actually, is one that lends itself to stability because he's got a kind of a, a hand that's designed to be on the ground. So I, I like having, you know, three, three points of contact on the ground and lunging forward. That looks really cool. But if you want him standing up on his own, he can do. He can do that very, very comfortably. So that's good to know. So yeah, they, they, they've done a great job of making strong, hefty joints that are going to support all the weight up top. Then just looking at the paintwork itself, this is something that I wasn't too sure about. Uh, well, initially, before I got in, because I thought one thing that I was dubious about with the wolves was that they are all essentially one colour, white, grey, brown or black. So how much kind of nuance and detail do you really get? Luckily, I'm not a toy manufacturer, because I didn't think about these things, but Loose Collector obviously did, because they've applied the best kind of highlights and washes and dry brushes. I mean, I, I don't know what the actual techniques are. It's, I don't think he sat there with a dry brush going over this guy. But the painting, especially on the chest here, you see the lighter gray that really does accentuate all the other details going on here. Because it's not just the veins, but you got like the, the, the ripples, the striations of the muscles on the chest, and then actually kind of texture of the skin as well it's not it's not smooth skin it it feels or looks more like a like a hide almost like a like an elephant's hide very leathery that's what I was trying to get at very very leathery so that that makes it feel a bit more real and that that goes a long way and that kind of paintwork extends all throughout the body as well you got some deeper darker blacks in the lower torso and then the, the fur itself on top you got the solid color that then goes to have some nice lighter grays and whites around the face really gives him a lot more character kind of like i got a little, a little salt and pepper here as well you know, we're, we're both graying but we're we're carrying it off well he has slightly thicker hair than i do also, one thing I was really pleased to see, which I wasn't expecting actually, was the articulated jaw as well. Because I, I was thinking, I'd seen the different pictures and I thought, oh, well, uh, is he, does he have swappable heads or what's the deal with that? Nah, no, no need for swappable heads. Boom. Just a great fun articulated jaw that actually sort of sits in different positions. You can wrangle it and finagle it to be slightly kind of off to the side if you want. So it's like, like kind of a rah, like a sort of a ripping, tearing kind of bite sort of look. But then you can center it up perfectly and have the teeth chomping down. Of course, for me, I, you, you gotta have the mouth wide open like he's, oh, I'm coming to get ya, sort of look. I, <laughs> the more I play with this, the more I, I really, really like it. Another thing with the dark or plain kind of color scheme is that, boy, does it make the eyes pop. The eyes really kind of glow in the head there. That's real, real nice. Then with the super pointy, ears as well. It, it feels so canine-ish. I really, really like that. And then going on to, to the hands, I told you I'd jump around all over the place with this. But the big, I, I, I like the, the big, big hands. And he's got three different pairs to choose from. So you kind of have this sort of slightly kind of curled, slightly relaxed kind of grip. Then you've got the more sort of like clenched fist. And you've got the great sort of holding his weight on the ground sort of hands as well. So those give you the different play options. I I just love love these sort of relaxed ones, like he's maybe howling at the moon or transforming and changing. There's so much fun stuff you can do with this. The tail, of course, is articulated as well. One thing I'd kind of like is if it could sort of stick out a little, a little bit more because of, of the ball socket. It eventually kind of sits a bit flat against him, but to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm fishing. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like, well, what, what could I critique, I suppose? Uh, the, the tail, the tail could stick out a little bit more. Also with, with the head itself, the, the head is on kind of a single dumbbell joint here. So so you, you've got the round and round rotation, but he doesn't really have, have much in the way of looking up or down. So so really the, the, up, the up and down looking is going to be done at the torso. But that will that will work, but again, you ain't you ain't going to get much articulation until you give him a bath. And be very careful when you first start because this is like a 
I assume, I've not pulled them apart, because I don't trust myself to put them back together, but I assume it's like a, a dumbbell that runs through here. So if you, you know, crank on that dumbbell, uh, you, you're going to damage it if you haven't loosened it up. So make sure you do that, because you will get full rotation in the upper torso once you've got it warmed up and all set and sorted. There you go. Doing the full 360. He did a 360 on me, brother. And then a 180. And then right back around. I'm sorry, I'm quoting 1980s Macho Man and Gene Oakland here. 180 degrees. 180 degrees. But he's gone another 360 and then. 360. And then another 180. So you can see, like, next to the big red rhinotaur. Dude, the, I, my monster shelf. Whew. My monster shelf is cooking, baby. You can see also we've got uh, Wang the Blade Master. We've got the Samurai Rabbit, both from Furay Planet over there. Uh, we we got the Equidon from Mythic Legions. The, the big orky boy from Hero Toys. Shao Kahn. All these monsters just leaping around. Ah, they, just, they, they just look so great together, man. I'm, I'm a little bit giddy for these. I just, I dig him. I dig him. Seeing him next to veteran William, man, just, that's an awesome pair of Wolfie boys right there. So I love those dudes. This is all going together in my, what I kind of consider my Mortal Kombat extended universe. Shao Kahn's got some serious heavies backing him up. And, and this guy, this is, this is the piece de la resistance. So, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that because you can sort of see he speaks for himself. You've got the double jointed elbows, you've got all the articulation in the knees, the rockers on the feet. I think that all I can really do now is just let you take a little look at him. He's available along with the three other variants over at Big Bad Toy Store. So you can check that out. But once again, the only thing I can't compare him to is my Mr. Hyde because I've I put Mr. Hyde in storage a while back. Why? Because I'm in a small apartment. And Mr. Hyde is gigantic. <laughs> but I would imagine the two of them together are going to look absolutely insane. This is actually, you can see the progression of Loose Collector's work. I like Mr. Hyde. But this is a huge, this is, this actually, this is a quantum leap forward compared to Mr. Hyde, who was already good. So Loose Collector, if this, if this is where we are now, I want to see where we're going. And speaking of where we're going, this Big Bad Wolf? I'm thinking fairy tales. Man, Loose Collector, so darn good with your female figures right here. A little La Muerta, which came along with, with this as well. You better believe she's going to be getting a review very soon too. But dude, so great with the female characters. How about a little a little Red Riding Hood? How, how about some, some fairy tale female characters to go with these big monsters? This this could be yep, you're welcome, loose collector. When when you retire off your fairy tale millions, you can thank model behavior. Cause I'm sure that no one else would have possibly thought about doing a fairy tale line, except McFarlane Toys in the 90s and probably a bajillion others as well. That notwithstanding, patented idea from model behavior right there. Cause yeah, this big bad wolf, he is big and he's pretty badass. So let's give this guy a grade. So as a final grade for Morocco of the West, I'm going to give this guy four and a half stars out of five with a BOOM seal of model behavior. I wanted to go five stars, but I don't know, maybe there's just a part of me that is feeling like, ah, oh, well, you know, this was directly sent from Loose Collector, and maybe that made me reluctant to give it, like, the maximum score, which it shouldn't do, but that's just me being overly cr criti cr critical. Yeah, let's go with that. Being overly critical of myself. But I think that I could maybe take off half a star because there's not more accessories, I guess, because he has the different hands, but that's all. When I think about like a veteran William or something, you're, you're loaded, you're laden with accessories for those kinds of things and extra comic books and this and that. So I'm just kind of thinking like, well, how could you add more value to the figure? But then again, the value is right here. So that's something I can also appreciate. You'll kind of get, you know, occasionally things like Marvel Legends where they say, oh, well, we couldn't put too much into the figure because we were spending money on the Builder figure and the accessories. With this, the money's all here. Like, that, that is it. You, you wanted a big bad werewolf? Boom. No time wasted, no expense wasted on anything else. This is what you're getting. So I kind of like that too. So my only critique is actually a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's model behavior. I, I, I guess I, you know, I, I, I've got a very positive spin on these things, but it's easy to when you've got a guy who looks like this. So gang, that does it for my review of this 
pretty damn awesome werewolf. What do you think about the collect about the the output from Loose Collector? I'm not going to retake that. <laughs> Comment below and let me know because right now this is one of my most favorite creators to watch. Always just bringing the heat, bringing the thunder, and I'm almost a little bit annoyed. I've got La Muerte here now because I could have just bypassed all of the Loose Collector female characters because they got Lady Death, Chaotica, Lady S Santa Santanas, there you go, easy for me to say, and Hell Witch as well. And now that I've got this one, I'm like, ah, geez, are they all this good? <laughs> got to make some tough financial decisions. But gang, thank you so much for watching. Loose Collector, thank you so much for sending this great wolf my way. I absolutely dig him. Gang, thanks for watching. I've said that already. Until next time. Keep displaying moral behavior.